Ladies and gentlemen, you are listening to the Pranzata podcast. I'm your host, Andrea Pranzatelli. And before we get into this podcast, this is podcast episode number 22. Don't forget to hit subscribe. Don't forget to hit like and leave a comment on anything as we go along. Um, whether you agree with something, disagree with something, I'm open to um, conversation. I love talking to my listeners in the comment section below. Um, also, for those of you who are new, this is a podcast where I sometimes interview people and I sometimes do solo podcasts. I interview local New Jersey, Philadelphia, and New York City comedians, musicians, and other artists of any kind. And sometimes I do solo episodes like I am today where I just share my weird, interesting thoughts for the week and I take questions and answers and answer um, questions for my guests. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave it in the comment section below or in my email, which I will leave in the bio. Anyways, let's get into it. Pranzata podcast episode 22. So first I want to say, let me just adjust this a little bit before it's like a little too low. Before I have a couple things I want to talk to you guys about. Um, I first want to say thank you to everybody who listened to my last podcast episode and who reached out to me. It really made me feel cared for and it made me feel like it was worth it to put out that episode. For those of you who don't know or didn't hear last week's episode, I was very open and honest about some personal struggles I was going through. I will actually leave a link to that episode below for you guys, um, or you can search it up. I think the episode is called Mushroom Trip Tur Dead Turtle and Anxiety Attack or something. So that should tell you, I think the title alone should tell you enough like that it was a really strange, um, but also open podcast. Um, you know, where I opened up and I talked about a lot of personal things I was going that was going on with me last week or the past few weeks. So I really appreciate everybody who reached out to me to um, support me and everything like that. If you care to uh, reach out to me, don't forget also to leave your comments in the comment section below. I really appreciate the messages on my Instagram and I love connecting with my audience. However, I would also appreciate if you guys would support the pod, the podcast on YouTube and leave some of your comments on here as well. I had to tell you guys that because I always have to yell at you guys for that. I always get people like leaving me messages in my inbox and then on Instagram, but they forget to leave comments on the comment section. So don't forget that. Um, so I have a couple of things I want to talk to you guys about, talk about with you guys today. Um, and I have some questions, some funny questions that some people left me on Instagram for this week's episode. So first, I wanted to tell you guys something interesting that happened. Um, well, okay, before I get into this, I do want to kind of follow up with last week's episode. Um, and I want to let you guys know I'm, I'm doing a lot better this week mentally. I feel a lot, I, I don't know, I just, I, I guess I needed to get that out of my system. I needed to get stress off of my chest and off of my sleeve. Um, and I guess putting it out on that podcast was a really helpful way to do that. Um, another thing that kind of like gave me a perspective change this week was seeing that everything, everything that was going on with Cuba, um, it just kind of made me realize that struggle is a part of the human experience. And, um, a lot of my struggles right now are financial, as I had mentioned in the previous podcast, um, and some other stuff as well. But it just made me realize like, kind of seeing what was going on in Cuba made me realize like, holy shit, like I may be having financial struggles right now, but at least I have the freedom to find a way to make the money. And I live in a country where I can have the freedom to use my skills to figure out how to you know what i mean like i just i just realized that yes i'm struggling financially but at, but seeing what was going on in that country and um how they don't have the freedom to do what they want there really opened my eyes to like okay i'm really doing well and i'm in a good spot right now even though i'm struggling my body works um i have a very strong will to move forward and I live in a country where I have the freedom to do what I want. So it's like, okay, everything that I need to succeed is here. Yes, I have some things that I have to overcome in order to succeed, um, but I have everything that I need. I have a will and I have a healthy body and I have uh, the freedom to do what I want. So that's really all I could ask for. So, you know, I'm gonna be tired. I'm gonna be working long hours, but I am gonna make it through and, you know, 
again, reaching out, everybody who reached out to me really helped me feel supported in that, in the process as well. So I really appreciate that. I just wanted to let everybody know I was doing okay. Also, um, to piggyback off of last week's episode, which was, um, if you want to see in more details, again, you have to click in the episode, you have to click the link below to see that episode after, you know, you listen to this episode. But, um, one of the things I was talking about on it was that I saw this big dead turtle, um, with like a cracked shell. And I, I believe in spiritual, um, I believe in spiritual signs in the universe and that they're guiding you. And for me, they show up a lot of the times through animals. So I had asked some of my listeners, like, what the hell is a big dead turtle? And I really liked some of the responses I got. A couple of people said that they think it's like um, some sort of breakthrough or coming out of your shell, so to speak. And I thought that was really interesting. And I felt kind of dumb for not thinking of that myself. I was like, that actually makes a lot of sense. Um, my interpretation was like, I'm going to die, you know? So it was, it was really nice to see what other people had to say and had to interpret about what a dead turtle can mean. What's, you know, spiritual significance could come from seeing a dead turtle. So thank you very much for that. Um, okay. So now to move on to the topics, I just wanted to say thank you first. Uh, one thing I wanted to tell you guys, like something pretty cool happened. So those of you know, I'm on a mission right now to, conjure up the finances to move to New York City and to figure out like how am I going to be able to afford to do it being that there's a big problem here because for one New York City is one of maybe I'm not sure if it is I don't know the statistics Um, somebody correct me if I'm wrong but I think New York City is the most expensive city to live in if not LA um, in the United States Um, Again, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's LA and New York City, right? Um, So I want to go to the city to pursue comedy because there are comedy open mics everywhere and and multiple times throughout the day, by the way, like they have open mics at 12 o'clock in the afternoon or open mics at one o'clock in the morning and they're like scattered throughout the day. So you can literally, if you live in New York City and you're a stand-up comedian, you can do an open mic 10 times a day if you really wanted to. Um, I wouldn't be able to because um, I would have to work a lot of hours um, to support myself. However, I would at least be able to go up like once or twice a day, like maybe once early before work and once late after work. And you really can't beat that. But here's the problem. The problem is that it's a very expensive city and comedians don't make money, (laughs) at least not in the beginning. So that's a bit of a conundrum. So I was really trying to put my, you know, I was trying to put my noggin at work to figure out like what kind of plan could I have to go there? Roommates, not roommates. What section do I live in? What are the safe sections? What are the, you know, unsafe sections? Like all these types of things, Brooklyn, whatever. Um, So I actually, I reached out to a comedian named Liz uh, Miele. So for those of you who don't know her, she's an amazing comic from New York City. And I just reached out to her on Instagram. And mind you, she's like a famous comedian. So I didn't think she was going to actually respond. I, I just messaged her on Instagram and I was like, hey, I'm my name's Andrea. I'm from New Jersey and I'm, you know, trying to move to New York City to pursue comedy. I'm wondering if I can ask for your advice on the logistics of things. And within like a week, she actually responded back. And she was like, of course, I would love to help you. And I was like, I didn't actually think she would respond. Like I was just kind of like taking a long shot. So I was really excited about that. Um, You know, she's very busy. So I had to wait like about three weeks to actually get um, to talk to her. But I did. I waited the three weeks and she followed through. She was like very sincere about her word and we put it in the calendar. So we had a Zoom session. So I'm really excited. I got to meet her on Zoom and, and it was pretty awesome because this is a comedian that I love. If you don't know her, Liz Miele, I, I, I actually feel embarrassed to say that I'm, I don't know if I'm pronouncing her last name correctly. I'm a huge fan, but I, I don't like, I don't know if it's Miele or Miele, but it's M-I-E-L-E, Liz Miele. Um, anyways, 
she's an amazing stand-up comic. I've always really liked her specials that were on that I saw on YouTube and everything like that. Um, and I always looked up to her. So it was a really cool experience to actually be able to sit on Zoom with her and see her and have her speak to me. It was like such a cool experience. And like side note about that, it made me realize like sometimes we set these limitations on ourselves as people. Like we don't ask the universe for what we want because we don't think we're like good enough to get it. So for example, I thought like, she'll never want to talk to me. Like, who am I? I'm a, a loser compared to her. But I just, I just said, what the hell? Might as well take a chance. And she actually, she responded. So I, I guess the point I'm trying to say is like, you could apply that, that gold, that knowledge to anything in life. You know, if there's a girl you want to approach that you think, oh, there's no way she, she's going to like me. There's a job you want to apply for. Oh, I don't have the skills. They're, they're not going to like me. Or you want to start stand up. Oh, I don't think I'm good enough. You just, I, I feel like we set these like self limiting behaviors, uh, self, not behaviors. We set these self limiting ideas about ourselves, and it doesn't help. You know what I mean? So I don't know. It's, it's a good idea to just go for what you want, even if it doesn't work out, you know, because you really never know what's going to work out. But anyways, so I got the chance to speak with her and I've been doing a lot of research about New York City and I learned a whole lot like from talking to her and a whole lot from um, doing my own reading and research and talking to different friends and people who live in the city. So one, you know, she said a lot of different things. But one thing that she made pretty clear, she, well, okay, there was a lot of things she made clear to me. One thing she made pretty clear to me that I want to share with you guys is that there is no, like I'm asking her for these questions on how to make it work, but the truth in the matter is that there is no one path for one comedian. They all do it completely different and they all find a way and a rhythm that works for them and their lifestyle. And especially now, like, you know, we, we're living in unprecedented times where everything is changing so fast and moving so rapidly. So you really don't know like what the, the doorway to success is anymore. You really just have to kind of go with the flow and figure your own thing out. Um, so for example, I was asking her a lot of questions like, um, which areas do I live in? Do I get roommates? Do I not get roommates? And what do I get? Oh, I also asked her, should I get a nine to five job so that I just have my evenings free? Like I've always been anti nine to five job, but then I was like, yeah, but if I have financial stability and steady hours, well then I can have the nights off to do stand up. So I just had so many questions from her, um, for her. And what she responded was that there's two ways to do it and she knows different comedians who have done it both ways um eliza Schles Schles schlesinger i also really like her too um she did the nine to five route she she moved to la to pursue comedy and she had a steady nine to five job during the day and then she did her comedy after work in the night um that was her route Liz, um, you know, the woman I just talked to the other day, she said that personally she preferred to do temporary jobs and not nine to five jobs. Right now, I would be considered to be doing temporary jobs myself. Um, and I've, I've often questioned if that is the right thing to do for what I want to do with my life. Because um, like I said, being a comedian or a musician, like you don't make a lot of money in the beginning. You don't, if not, you might end up losing money sometimes. Um, doing certain gigs or, you know, recording music in the beginning, that sort of thing drains your pocket. So I was really confused what to do. And her answer to that was, um, she believes that she, there's no one, again, there's no one way to do it. There's like different paths that are going to work for everybody. And you have to find what is your path to success and what is going to resonate with you. But she personally preferred to do temporary jobs um, because she said that if she got some type of opportunity to perform, well, then she could just leave the job and then get another temporary job. <laughs> so there's a, you know, nine to five jobs are steady, but there's also a risk to that because um, you can't really just quit and get a replacement for it really easily. You know, it's kind of like you go through this hiring process, you're a part of the team, you go to work meetings, like it's a lot of energy to do something like that versus being like a dog walker or an Uber driver or whatever um, and being able to just like do whatever or even a waitress. She said she took waitressing jobs um, 
And she said that they're so they're so abundant in New York City that like literally if she got a gig on a Saturday night and her boss said, no, we can't get coverage, you have to work, she would just quit that restaurant and go to a different one. So I, I understood what she was saying. Um, another thing that she said to me, which I think is good information, is that I asked her about like the roommates thing and she was like, she's a firm believer in roommates. She's like, you really have to see like what it is that you want to do. And she's like, she said that she personally had like 40 roommates and she lived in the city and she was able to make it work that way. And um, because she was like, why? She's like, if you want to pursue the arts, why bother paying a lot of money? Like keep your costs down as low as you possibly could. Um, so the less money you have to spend on your rent and utilities and everything, the more free time that you have to do your work, to do your craft. Um, that made a lot of sense. And it was just really lovely speaking with her. She's honestly a really nice, really strong woman. Um, somebody I definitely really look up to. Um, I think I said it already, but check her out. Liz Mealy um, on YouTube. Her special is awesome. But the one thing that resonated the most with me to me about what she said um is at the end of the day uh, whatever she says her way might not work for me so i really have to find like what my path is in this and what resonates with me so i really did a lot of thinking and a lot of like i wrote down a lot of notes um like kind of writing my ideas out and everything like that and one thing I realized is that I, I agree with her on the um, temporary job thing. I don't think it would be good for me to have a nine to five job. I really like teaching my private music students because I can, first of all, the hours are kind of like perfect for what it is that I want to do because um, to teach private music lessons, you, you basically work like three to 8 p.m. Um, because like the students get out of school they're in school during the day and then they want to take their lessons in the evening so it's like okay they don't start till three so if i'm out late doing some type of gig or something um i could sleep in the next day or i can get my like writing and stuff done during the day or my workouts or whatever it is that i need to do to keep myself moving and inspired um i can get that done during the day and then they're kids so they don't stay up late so like the latest i'll have a lesson is eight if that a lot of the times i'm done by like six or seven so that's kind of perfect um the only thing though is to live in the city i'm going to need a little bit extra than just my private students so what i'm working on right now is i'm working on um applying i actually have a job i got a job interview tomorrow in new york city actually so um i can't stay up late on this podcast i didn't i'm not drinking tonight if you haven't noticed because i i want to sleep well um i have a job interview um at a restaurant actually it's a comedy club it's it's a lol times square um so i'm really excited about that so what i'm gonna do my plan is I'm going to try to get a restaurant job just two days a week, maybe three if they're not willing to hire me at only two. Um, but like, I wanna try to keep it at two because I want the other days to be devoted to my private students. And what I'll do is like whatever students that I had on those two days, I'll just move them and like pack them in my schedule the other days, you know what I mean? Rather than having like three students on Monday, just move those three students to like whatever, Saturday, disperse them throughout the week and then leave all of Monday, all of Sun. I'm trying to leave all of Sunday and Monday to work in a restaurant. So um, I'm going tomorrow to interview with LOL Times Square. It's a comedy club. Um, and you know, I might not get hired. So I'm gonna bring some resumes with me and I'm gonna go around to other local restaurants in the area to try to find someone who will hire me for just part-time like two or three days a week it might be a little bit iffy because like um you know uh, some restaurant people might just be like no we need you saturdays we need you fridays and that's not going to work for me because in the entertainment business you need those nights off so we'll see um interesting side note though from what i heard because of post pandemic i've heard that a lot of um restaurants are actually desperate to hire staff so i might actually get lucky because some people might be so desperate for staff that they'll take whatever they can get 
And I think the reason is, is because uh, multiple reasons. For one, I think some, I, I actually talked to a restaurant owner about this. So I'm not just making this shit up. This was like an actual restaurant owner in this area where I live in New Jersey um, told me, he said that he's so desperate for staff in his restaurant that he's willing to pay somebody a thousand dollars just to start. I'm sure people are like, why don't you just work there? Um, because I'm going to be moving to the city in a couple months. So it doesn't make sense for me to just start there and then move. And he already knew, he already knew that I was moving to the city because I was talking to him about it. And, and I, I made a joke about it. I was like, well, I could start for three months. I'm just going to leave in, in a couple months. And we were laughing about that. But um, basically what he said was like, he was like, I am so desperate for workers, nobody wants to work anymore because for one, some people are actually still writing off of their unemployment. I'm not really sure how, I guess they're just saying that they don't feel safe and, and they're trying to extend their unemployment as much as they possibly could. So for one, some people are still extending their unemployment. And then for another thing, the people who did leave the restaurant business and they're not on unemployment anymore, they're like, why the fuck would I go back to work when I can now all these companies are hiring people remotely for like twenty dollars an hour. So why the fuck like like different companies and stuff like that? They're like, why the fuck would I go into a business and waste my time um, if I could just like work from home for selling insurance or something for like twenty bucks an hour in my kitchen in my underwear? You know, so I get it. You know, but. So I'm, I might get lucky finding, oh, why don't, or, or I'm, maybe I should just apply to one of those insurance jobs like part-time and have that be my part-time gig. Um, but anyways, I don't, I don't know if I want that though. I think I want to be out and, and, and I would actually, you know, I, would, I wouldn't mind working in a restaurant like two days a week. I wouldn't want it to like overcome my whole schedule, but I think just like part-time, two, three days a week max, I actually think it would be really nice to, meet you know people my age and meet different people especially in new york city i actually think it would be really good for me and it would be really fun and also inspiring like you know i'm gonna quote whitney cummings i did not say i did not make this quote myself um but i love this quote whitney cummings said art reflects life so in order to be a good artist you need a life <laughs> so i think what she was getting at is that she's like the workaholic type and she spends all her time in her house working. And then she would have these like dry spells of being unable to come up with something creative. And she realized it's because like she sits in her, her house all the time. She's gotta go out. Like she had to allow herself to go out and not be such a workaholic because she's not gonna have things to write about if she's not a part of society. There's, there's gonna be nothing relatable in her comedy. So I'm kind of viewing it that way too. It's like, yeah, I could, I could write on this remote work and like work from home on the phone, but I already pretty much do that with teaching lessons. I teach, you know, pretty much, pretty much 100% virtual piano lessons at this point because none. Again, people got so used to the remote life that most of them don't want to come back in person. They just want to stay online, you know, which is good because then I could leave New Jersey and not worry about losing too much business. I'll probably still keep like 80% of my business, um, but I don't want to be 100% virtual. I would like a part-time job where I like socialize and meet people and again get inspired by society and observe things so <coughs> and what a better place for me to do it part-time than a comedy club because if I'm trying to learn how to be a good comic literally while I'm working I mean I'll probably be really distracted like delivering food and drinks but um, if I have any downtime I could literally see comedians at work and kind of learn on the job you know, so I just think that would be, if I can just get them to hire me for a few days, I think that would be the perfect job for me. Anyways, I wanted to, throw, I wanted to tell you guys that. Um, another thing that, again, going back to what she said about like carving your own path, she was a big advocate of like, get a roommate, you know? I disagree. I, do, <laughs> I, I disagree. I see her point about, um, I see her point about keeping your costs down as much as possible. But here's the thing, and, and this is where I'm getting at, actually, I wanted to tell you guys this. To live in New York City, even with a roommate, you're still gonna spend, it, okay, if you're gonna live in Brooklyn, you can probably find 
and this is all like new stuff I'm learning, by the way. So it's like really cool to learn more about New York and everything. So if you live in Brooklyn, you could probably find a room for like 700 would be a good deal. But not always. Sometimes you're going to still pay 900. You're going to still pay a thousand. But you could if you look really carefully, you could find a room for 700. But here's here's the kicker or as Mark Norm would say, here's the clinker. Um, the clinker is in Brooklyn, it's a lot of people don't realize this. It's actually a 45 minute commute to Manhattan. So to me, that seems kind of like pointless because it, and, and again, it worked for her. Everybody's path is different. You know, in her case, she said that she was able to get work done on the train, like she would do comedy writing on the train. I'm not a good train worker because I, I, I used to commute to my college and I hated working on the train. I, I like to like I like to like either sit in a cafe or sit at home. Those are like my I would say those are my two best like workplaces are like sitting in my kitchen with coffee or going out to a cafe with coffee. That's like where I'm most inspired to do my writing. Um, and it's usually during the day, by the way. I'm not a great nighttime writer, which I want to get better at. But anyways, I digress with that. Um, so anyways, you live in Brooklyn. You still have to commute 45 minutes to get to Manhattan, to get to most of the open mics and stuff. Not that there aren't open mics in, in Brooklyn, because there are. And Brooklyn's, by the way, Brooklyn, is, is, from what I hear, is an amazing neighborhood. Like, it's very artistic. And there's a lot of music, music musicians there. So that would be good for me. But um you know for for what i want to do i'm mainly moving to new york for comedy so i don't know to me it didn't make sense so i go to i live in brooklyn and then commute 45 minutes i might as well just live where i'm living now and commute one hour to the city i only live one hour away from the city now so that didn't make sense to me so i'm definitely not going to live in brooklyn um if you want to live right in new york city to even with a roommate you're you're gonna spend at least a thousand if you're lucky but a lot of the times these roommates like to live in the heart of like where you want to be a lot of the times like to have a roommate you have to pay like 1600 like like estimated 1600 so okay what are the other options to me rather than getting a roommate in the city and spending that much or getting a roommate in brooklyn and commuting almost an hour to me, it makes sense to live on the east side of Manhattan um, in one of these following towns. I don't know. I'm, and again, this is all new for me. I, I, it's really interesting to learn about this stuff. So I hope I'm like teaching somebody a thing or two who might also be interested in moving to New York City um, or visiting the city or vacationing in the city or whatever. So on the east side of Manhattan, there's a couple of towns, um, Hoboken, Jersey City, Weehawken, North Bergen, Union City, like around those. Those areas only take like 20 minutes to get into the city. That's way quicker than Brooklyn. Um, and they're so much cheaper, so much cheaper. So if you wanted a roommate, oh, not, not Hoboken though. <laughs> Hoboken is like, it, in my opinion, if you're gonna move to Hoboken, you might as well just move to New York City because um, the prices in Hoboken are really expensive. So. Ex Hoboken's like part of that strip that I'm talking about but if you're trying to save a buck no don't don't do that um your best bet would be Jersey City Weehawken North Bergen or Union City um it really depends like what you want and what you're looking for I think if you're like if you really want like a lively night scene where you can meet young people your age and have fun and kind of get that city vibe and still live in that city vibe i think jersey city would be your best option because they have a really jersey city jersey city has an amazing downtown um i was there not too long ago performing stand-up and i would love to live there so jersey city would be like my top pick and then my other picks would be weehawken or union city those aren't as um nice <laughs> they're not as nice places to live it's not like you're gonna walk outside and have this lovely nightlife you know it could be a little sketchy in some areas but it's it's you know i've lived <laughs> i've lived in manville new jersey it's just as sketchy there is what i'm trying to say or like i've lived in 
Um, some parts of Boundbrook, New Jersey are sketchy. So it, yes, it's sketchy, but like as long as you're smart and you know your way around things, you'll be fine. Um, so I'm not really worried about that. But what I'm getting at here is like, why don't I just move there? Rather than, rather than having a roommate and living in the city for more than what I'm paying here in my own apartment, why don't I get my own apartment in one of those areas? Because I did look online and you can get a one bedroom or a studio in those areas, not Hoboken, but those other towns. Um, I would say the cheapest was Union City. And there's a reason for that because it's not the nicest of all of them. Um, but I I saw a one bedroom apartment there for a thousand dollars. That's pretty much like you know, uh, that's that's a steal. By the way, that's like a really good deal. Um, I don't know. To me, it does it doesn't make sense to have a roommate and for the same price that you can just live by yourself. Like that doesn't make sense to me. And again, like going back to what um, what she said, everybody's path is different. Maybe for her she's more inspired by a communal effort to live in a house. I'm very much a private person and I feel like I need to spend most of my time alone in order to thrive and and in order to create. I've had roommates a lot of my life and it has never worked out for me. So to me, if I can find a way to live as close as I can to the city, for as cheap as I can and live alone, that's gonna be my best bet. So I, of course I would like to live in Jersey City because I do think it would be socially better for me. Like there would be a nicer downtown where I can go out and eat and maybe I can get work at a restaurant there. So I don't always have to go into the city to work at a restaurant, you know? Um, but you know, I think Jersey City is like a pinch more expensive. I think if you're gonna look at a studio, it's probably gonna run around twelve or thirteen hundred there, which isn't bad. Um, but if you want like the cheapest deal you can possibly get, you're looking at Union City or Weehawken. So I'm gonna do that route. I don't think it's worth it to get a cheap apart to get a roommate in Brooklyn and then commute forty five minutes to the city. That doesn't make sense. I'd I'd rather live. Not only that, but New Jersey taxes are cheaper and I wouldn't have to like go through the process of like going to the New York DMV and changing my license plate. I would still be a New Jersey resident. So that's like a a whole nother factor of it. It's like, wait a second. Um, It saves a lot of stress that way. And then, you know, my business taxes will be cheaper. I'm pretty sure like the business taxes in New York are probably a lot of money. So um, that I don't know. To me, that's going to be my path and my route. Um, because I think in order for me to be the best that I could possibly be, I need freedom. That's freedom is a big deal for me. And as a matter of fact, I feel like it, I feel like freedom is my life mission. I feel like my life mission is to free myself and also to encourage freedom for others. Um, freedom from being a slave to my debts. Um, freedom from ha- freedom from being a slave to emotional problems and stuff like that. Um, freedom to do what I want and not have people telling me what to do. So I don't know. And then um, inspiring my listeners to find their version of freedom. Um, what could possibly possibly be holding them back in life, and what kind of things could help them find the freedom they seek? Um, whether to be freed of toxic relationships or to be um, freed out of these limiting beliefs that you know, like I was talking about before I, I just think freedom is so important and um, I've lived <laughs> like I've said I've lived in roommate situations and it has never worked out I don't think I'm a good roommate I'm gonna be honest I I'm very clean I mean here's the thing I think I'm a good roommate but other people have not been <laughs> happy living with me um, I'm very clean so that's not an issue But my problem living with people is that I'm very much to myself to the point where I've offended every single person I've ever lived with. Every single person I've lived with has gotten their feelings hurt by me because I don't want to hang out with them. And and it's not, it's never personal at all. Um, It's literally just like, I'm a very hardworking person. I'm a workaholic, you know, like I was saying about Whitney Cummings with with the workaholic thing. I I feel more inclined to my work than I do to social settings. So a lot of the times in living situations, I might come home 
and just like be in my own world and i'll say hi to you <laughs> like like don't get me wrong i'll say hi to you but i'm just not um i'm not gonna i'm i'm i don't really hang out that much like i don't sit and watch tv with them um that type of stuff so i'm just not i'm just not really like a good roommate in that sense i think i'm a great roommate because i pay my bills on time and i'm really clean so you know i think to some people depending on what you want i would be like a dream roommate like i leave you the fuck alone pay my bills and i'm clean i think that's like great but from my experience a lot of roommates expect a little more socially and i'm unable to provide that so and not only that but not to mention um people issues really affect me like i'm very sensitive and very emotional so if i am upsetting someone like if i'm aware that my actions are upsetting somebody that's not to say that i don't care i'm still gonna do what i want to do like i'm still gonna kind of be in my own world and in my own head and do my own thing but that's not to say that i don't notice how my actions are affecting others and it doesn't kill me or, or like burn me on the inside so for that matter it's like and not only that but there's just other things about my lifestyle that i think would really bother people at this point like i have a podcast in my in my house like like i'm sitting here in the living room just like talking to myself or sometimes i have guests over i sing i play piano i teach virtually so i'm gonna i'm gonna be playing piano and singing in the house um i have two cats and like if we share furniture my cats will scratch up their furniture that type of stuff so it's just like why go through the trouble if there's a way for me to live by myself and cheaper really close to new york city where i can just get into the city in like 10 20 minutes i would do that you know so um yeah that that's my plan i i'm i'm gonna the biggest advice i took from liz was that find your own path and what works for you so i was able to take her advice and kind of carve out the things that worked for me what worked for me was the temporary jobs but the roommate thing does not work for me you know i i i want i i want to have the freedom to uh, sing weird melodies like by myself or walk around in my underwear <laughs> like i i know that sounds uh weird but i i i i just want the freedom to to do what I want, you know? I just think it's such a great feeling and um, I don't want that taken away from me. As a matter of fact, if I'm unable to find a place when my lease is over, I'm gonna stay here another year because I only live an hour away from the city. I'll just commute to the city for a year and then try again next year because it's not worth it to me to give up that freedom. I think I made that clear. It, I, it, it, it's probably, I'm probably like beating it in everyone's heads right now, but it's almost like, I'm kind of like, I'm kind of like telling myself too, like, this is your decision. Don't feel bad about it. Cause I feel like guilty in a sense that I'm not willing to like live with people or work. Like I, I feel guilty that I'm not willing to live with people. It makes me feel selfish, but I need to remind myself that um, everybody in life has their own unique things to offer but in order to offer those things to the world you need to take care of yourself first and i know my privacy is such a vital part of taking care of myself so i'm kind of like talking myself out of this like spiral of like oh you're such a selfish bitch like that you can't live with people it's like it, it is who i am i'm a good person i just can't live with people it's fine so anyways i wanted to like tell you guys about that um with the the thing that happened with comedian Liz Mealy um, and you know my plans and some information that I learned about Brooklyn and you know Union City and Jersey City and all that and different sections of the city if anybody has any questions about that uh, let me know um, we can have a conversation about that because I also learned about a lot of like neighborhoods in the city and like which ones are the safe ones but um, I'm assuming that's not why you guys are really here so if you if you do want to hear about that, just let me know and I'll talk about it a different time. Um, I'm going to go to the questions soon, but before I go to the questions, I wanted to talk about, um, oh, I kind of wanted to tell you guys about this because I think this is really neat. Um, the Okinawa diet. So, um, uh, I'm a big fitness junkie. You guys know that about me. 
I work out every week. Um, I wouldn't say every day, but I would say at least every other day. You know, I do cardio, I do lifting. I've been doing a lot of my workouts at home now, um, be, especially because I'm so busy working to save money right now. So a lot of times I don't really have, a lot of the time I don't have time to go to the gym. So mostly I just like lift my weights from home. Um, a couple months ago i went like in spring breakish time like march or april i went to austin texas to visit it and um i came back 10 pounds heavier than i was when i went so everybody has like a what's called a set weight uh for, for those of you who haven't heard of this set weight is like where your natural body weight is um that is your primal healthy spot they say a lot of people's set weight is this which is it's kind of like this is anecdotal like so i i would take this with a grain of salt but it also kind of makes sense too so they say that um your your healthy set weight is most likely who you were when you were like 17. um which again could be wrong if you were eating a lot of junk food at age 17 and you gained weight at a young age um, but I think mostly it probably is true because I do notice a lot of people who like can eat whatever they want when they're in high school and then they randomly like blow up <laughs> like 10 years later because their metabolism changes. But usually most of the time, um, people, unless they're, like I said, unless they're eating just like a really, really bad diet and they're not exercising at all, um, most of the time, like around the age of 17 is where your set weight is. Um, where your body just wants to be and where you're the healthiest. So for me, that always, that has always been 120. 120 has always been like my set weight where I feel like everything's working, you know, like my body feels, my skin feels good. I feel lively. I feel energetic. 120 has always been like my happy place. Um, I was 120. I went to Austin and came back 130. Um, I tried to count calories and lose the weight and I only got down to like 125 and I was like, okay with it. I was like, well, I look good, so who cares? Um, then what happened was I started having really, really bad stomach issues where, um, you know, not to be graphic, but you know, we're all adults here. We could talk about this. I couldn't go to the bathroom. Like everything I was eating, I was just bloated and holding onto all my food. Um, and it would get to the point where like, I would be crying sometimes because I just, nothing would come out of me. I would eat and it would all just stay into me, um, stay inside me. And I was wondering like, what the fuck is going on with my body? Like there was something really off. So I wanted to play around with my diet and see what was going on with me and how I could fix the problem. Um, the one thing I didn't notice was that I was eating tons of dairy like I am, by the way, I'm a cheese head. I am a cheeseaholic. Um, I'm not so much a, like a milk person. I actually think milk is gross. I've never liked it. I pref I actually prefer almond milk in my coffee, not because I'm trying to like do the right thing, but because I actually like the taste better. Um, I don't like milk, but I love cheese, all kinds of cheese. I love cream, like cream sauces, and I love ice cream. So that's like my thing. And um, I did notice that I was consuming like, I, <laughs> like this is embarrassing, but I would probably, probably like 50 or 60% of my diet was like dare, like cheese. I was pretty much eating a keto diet without trying. Like I wasn't intentionally doing it, but it was just like, I was consuming so much dairy and f things that are high in fat that I might as well have just been keto at that point. Um, like I was eating a ton of, which actually I don't think this is keto. I think this is kind of high and higher in carbs. I could be wrong though. I was eating a ton of cottage cheese. Like that was a big thing for me. I was eating cottage cheese because it was high in protein. Um, and I was trying to like up my protein to build muscle. Um, and then I was eating like a lot of um, like just cr but oh, butter. I was doing like a ton of butter too. So yeah, you guys get the idea. I was eating a lot of cheese. Um, so one might assume that my stomach issues, um, you know, the constipation issues were probably because of all the cheese. And that makes sense because they do say that um, too much dairy and too much cheese backs you up. So I wanted to kind of like refresh my system. And 
like just reset myself and I, I i'm not saying that i won't eat cheese again but i needed to like detox from the addiction you know so um i did i found out this i actually found this out in the beginning of the pandemic um when when the pandemic first hit i was like i gotta take care of my immune system you know and i, I already feel like i do but i feel like now more than ever you know it's important and integral to have a good healthy immune system to fight this virus um that's going around so i literally googled like who are the healthiest what is the healthiest country in the world and um a couple of things came up i believe a couple of them were like nordic countries like maybe sweden i i i'm don't quote me on that because i can't remember exactly but i'm pretty sure there was like a few nordic countries like maybe norway or sweden or whatever but the number one uh, people that live the longest um, was this town in Japan called Okinawa. And th apparently that had, I wasn't the, I'm not the first person who thought of this, like who thought to like Google, hmm, like we're the healthiest people. Let's just eat what they're fucking eating, you know? Um, so there's actually a diet called the Okinawa diet. I never heard of this, but when I did my research, I found it out. So basically, the Okinawa, the Okinawa diet eats mostly carbs. Um, a big part of their, a big staple of their diet is sweet potatoes. They eat the purple sweet potatoes, but when I did it, I just ate any type of sweet potatoes. I did eat some purple sweet potatoes, but I also ate just like regular yams. You know, I figured they're similar. But like a huge part of their diet was uh, tropical fruits, sweet potatoes, a little bit of rice, but mostly the sweet potatoes for their carbs. So like, again, a lot of carbs, the fruits, the um, sweet potatoes, a little bit of rice. Um, they don't eat any meat except for pork. And they don't eat a lot of pork, by the way. When I say they eat pork, they eat it like once a week. They don't eat it every day like we do. Um, and then they eat a little bit of eggs and fish. So basically, if you wanted to kind of americanize what the okinawa diet is it's basically a pesca ovatarian pesca oh no ova pescatarian diet ova as in eggs and then pescatarian as a fish it's basically a pesca ova pescatarian diet that allows pork and is gluten free they don't eat any wheat products so that's been, that's what i did when I wanted to resolve my stomach issues. And I, I followed it, I'm still on it, and I followed it religiously. I cheated here and there, I had ice cream the other day, but as far as like an everyday basis, I eat this diet now where um, I don't eat any gluten, I eat mostly carbohydrates, um, I do eat some fats, but just like a little bit. Um, and then my protein comes from fish. You can't do too much on the fish, by the way, because you'll have like mercury issues, um, but, I get I get some pork like twice a I'll, I think they eat I, I'll admit that I eat like more pork than probably they do in Okinawa but again I'm like kind of Americanizing the, my version of the diet I eat pork like twice a week um fish like once a week and then eggs like every other day that I didn't have pork or fish um and then I eat like a lot of rice a lot of sweet potatoes a lot of fruits and and vegetables by the way I forgot to mention that they're big on like um carrots cabbage root vegetables and, and i actually think this is a notable mention because i did mention that the nordic countries were also extremely healthy um and the one common denominator between the okinawa diet and the sweden the the norwegian whatever i don't remember exactly which country but it was one of these countries um the the common thing between these diets was root vegetables and potatoes so I thought that was interesting and, and I was like, okay, so it's really important, you know, because in Sweden or, or Norway, they eat cheese and meats. They don't just eat pork and fish. They do eat pork and fish, but they also eat like cheeses and different types of meats and stuff like that. So to me, it was important to like look at the two diets and say, okay, well, what's the common thing here? And apparently root vegetables are really good for you. So um, root vegetables would be like, parsnips um beets um carrots that type of thing um but the okinawans also have like seaweed and um uh, cabbage they're like really big on cabbage and, and that type of thing so i've been you know i've been eating a lot of like gluten-free um faux soups 
um sometimes you got to be careful with the focus i think sometimes there's beef broth but I, I, that's not the end of the world you could pro and you could probably find some that serve vegetable broth but i've been doing a lot of like faux ramen soups but with like shrimp in it instead or pork in it sometimes um and i just make sure that the the noodles are glu gluten free so anyways i just wanted to tell you guys about that because i thought it was a really interesting diet and another thing i wanted to tell you was that my body got to its set weight and that wasn't even my goal my goal was to fix my stomach issues and i did fix my stomach issues um within and it was crazy it, fi it fixed it within like two days <laughs> like i like finally was going regularly again and um my stomach was fine and so it probably definitely was the dairy that fucked me up um but besides the fact that i cut out the dairy and became so much better um I actually like got to my set weight of one, 120 and I haven't lost any more weight. So it's it's not like I'm just like losing tons of weight. I'm like at a really healthy weight um, and I'm feeling really good. Like I feel like my skin is clearer. Um, I'm very energetic. Like I feel like, um, I just feel like I am have a little more vitality in me. So there's gotta be something to it because these people are living the longest. Um, now again, there could be other factors for that. It might not just be their diet. It could be their lifestyle because you have to remember it's not just food that keeps you alive. It's lifestyle and everything like that. You know, they might have cleaner water. They they might um, they might have healthier habits. Like they might have more time off of work and that type of thing. So um, you know, you got to take that with a grain of salt. It's not just the diet. Um, it's also the lifestyle. But that's not to say that the diet isn't also incredibly important. So. I'm really like excited that I found this and really happy I found this because it's really helped me a lot. Like I finally got to my set weight that I was trying to get to and my stomach issues are like cured now, you know? So Okinawa diet, if you're interested in trying something new, check that out, you know? And also, I also think it's like really balanced as well. Cause it's like, I've tried veganism in the past and it was too hard for me. Um, I've tried keto. That was too hard. For, like, by hard, I mean harsh on my system, not not um, hard as in like I couldn't do it because I was able to do both of them. Um, harsh, I, it was harsh on my system. Um, veganism, I found that I was bloated constantly because of all the fiber I was getting. Um, and then with um, the keto diet, I was like constipated all the time. So I was having stomach issues on both of these diets. This one, I think why it's successful for me is because it's like a really good balance. Like you're cutting out, um, you're not completely cutting out meats. Like you're still getting a little fish, a little eggs, but you're not just like meat, meat constantly. You know what I mean? Like um, the Okinawa ones, like the, if they have like a food pyramid, I don't think they have a food pyramid, but if they were, uh, meat would be the smallest one. Most of it, like I said, would be healthy carbohydrates. Um, so it's really interesting. And and it's it's funny, like, People think carbs are the devil, but I lost weight effortlessly by eating mostly carbs. <coughs> and that's not the first time that happened, by the way. Last year, I had a personal trainer um, who was training me to get in shape, and he put me on a high-carb diet as well. And I lost too, actually too much weight. I was like too skinny. Like looking back at photos, I think I was like 113 pounds at my lowest with him. Um, and that was from like a high carb diet. So it's like, it's like interesting. You can't always like trust what you read or what you hear. Um, I don't think carbs are the devil. I think it comes down to like choosing the healthier carbs. So staying away from like white pastas and white breads, or maybe like, personally, I like to stay away from bread altogether, but th I don't think it's necessary for everybody. Um, it just works well for me, but I don't think carbs are the devil. You just got to choose the right ones, right? So how long are we going? I feel like, holy shit. So I'm just getting to the questions and answers now. And you know what's funny is I actually had more topics I wanted to talk about, um, but I knew I would talk too much. So I cut those out. We'll talk, we'll save them for next time because I have some funny things I want to talk to you guys about. So questions and answers. I didn't get a ton of questions because I, I kind of put the request for them out last minute, but I did get a few questions. Um, I have three questions. First question, what is your favorite thing about yourself and how do you get in your own way? By the way, uh, Jesus-Spiffy 
from Instagram asks me this. I'm going to say it again. What is your favorite thing about yourself and how do you get in your own way? Um, I love this question, these questions, by the way, because I like to ask my podcast guests personal awareness questions. And um, it feels cool to be like on the other end of the spectrum and like having them asked to me. Um, so by the way, if anybody wants to leave questions for next week's episode, I would love personal awareness questions. I think they're great. Um, my favorite thing about myself, I would have to say, is my persistence, my resilience, and my work ethic. So that, like kind of like a package there. I'm the type of person who can get up when I'm kicked down. I get kicked down, <laughs> definitely. Um, and I, by the way, like I, I kind of wanted when, cause I read these questions in advance. So I already thought about them. I kind of wanted to mention this to you guys. Like um, I deal with depression and anxiety. So I work hard, but that's not to say that I don't struggle a lot. As I told you before, I opened up in the previous episode that I was struggling with depression and anxiety. Um, but I consider myself a high functioning depressed person, <laughs> um, meaning that I struggle a lot, but like I said, this is my favorite thing about myself. I have this ability to see the big picture and realize that like, just because I'm upset now and I feel horrible now and feel like killing myself now, um, I know that if I choose to do the right thing in this moment, despite how I feel, there will be a reward that I cannot see yet, but it will come. Um, I have that, I have that vision, you know, I have that foresight to be able to like understand that. Um, so I would say that's definitely my favorite thing about myself is like my persistence and my um, ability to keep moving forward despite failure. Um, yeah, like some people, I, I never get, and I'm not judging anyone by the way, because everyone expresses like depression differently, but I'm just saying this is my experience. When people are like, oh, I can't get out of bed, like I'm depressed, I'm like, just go live your life depressed. <laughs> like, like you know what I mean? Like, go do your grocery uh, shopping while you're depressed or work out depressed. Like, there's been times where I've gone to the gym depressed. Like, it's okay. Like, you can be depressed and still function. But I, and I know that might sound insensitive, so I don't mean to, like, shame anyone who can't get out of bed because of depression. I'm just saying, like, that's my mindset about it and and I would say again that that's my favorite thing about myself is that I do have that mindset and that I'm very persistent with things um again you can see why my roommates uh, like in my past roommates hate me because I'm like I'm so persistent that I don't like pay attention to the people around me and it, it, it insults people but I don't mean to I actually I actually I'm actually a really loving person I'm just very um laser focused on goals so it comes across as like i don't care but i actually really care a lot about people um how do you get in your own way so now i love this question again because i i always ask my guests personal awareness questions so i think it's important that i take a look at myself in the mirror as well um i would say getting in my own way uh, i would say a, a huge thing that i do I would say I would say it relates to relationships, um, uh, particularly romantic relationships. I feel like I do have the ability to keep moving, but when I feel like I've been re rejected in a romantic setting, like a romantic way, that might be the one thing that does hold me back, and that would be the one situation where I do have difficulty moving in the sense that I will start to talk negatively about myself and I'll start to like beat myself up for mistakes I've made in the relationship or um, <clears throat> if I feel some type of like romantic rejection in any type of way, I'll start to like spiral into negative thoughts about um, my really my it, it's crazy it could kind of like spiral me to like think about my whole life like where I went wrong from the very beginning. Um, so I would, I would say that probably my biggest setback is getting distracted by romantic situations. Um, and, and, and in a positive way too, because also it can happen when I fall in love. Like when I fall in love, I could sometimes maybe lose sight of my goals. So I think that, um, 
that's not to say that I don't eventually want a relationship, but I do feel like when I get in one, I need to find a healthy balance where I spend time with the person, but I don't let it like lose sight of my goals. And if I get involved with somebody and it doesn't work out, I don't let that lose sight of my goals as well and beat myself up. For example, I had a romantic situation this year in, in 2021 around like January that didn't work out and I was so upset that I couldn't, um, those of you know, I teach my lessons and I door dash part time for extra savings. Um, I taught my lessons, but I couldn't find like the will to door dash for like a whole month because I, I was so upset about the situation that, by the way, I'm very well aware of the fact that my answers are totally contradictory. In, in the very first one, I said like, oh, I'm a high functioning depression, I keep moving. And this one I'm saying, well, like I completely stopped moving. I'm aware of the contradiction. It, it's just that in most situations, like uh, financial struggles, I can keep moving. In family struggles, I can keep moving. Friendship struggles, I can keep moving. There's a lot of things in life where I'm able to keep moving, but this is the one part where if it goes wrong, I, I do struggle to keep moving. I'm aware of this um, contradiction. But yeah, like I said, if, if I feel like brokenhearted, um, like I said, like I was in this romantic situation that didn't work out in January, I couldn't DoorDash for a whole month. And looking back, that I'm struggling with money now that that's like I could have made like two thousand dollars that I would have that I don't have now if I had just kept going and it would have helped so I would say that is my biggest thing that sets me back is either falling in love and being so romantically involved with somebody that um I lose sight of my goals or if it doesn't work out me being so upset that I lose sight of my goals so I think that like romantic things are tricky for me and it's probably a good thing that it's taken me a while to find like a boyfriend because I I want to like figure this shit out before I get into another relationship so I don't like fuck up my life um so that's that next question I have two more questions the next question is by chucky2 underscore x so this is on instagram chucky2 underscore x why why are you super cute and inspiration for your tats tats as in tattoos and i think what he meant to say was what is your inspiration for your tats um why am i super cute um well first of all thank you i i don't i actually think about this like a lot it sounds like conceited but i think about this oh not not that i'm super cute but what i'm about to say i i always think to myself like i don't think I don't see myself as like super cute. I think I'm, I, I, I do feel attractive and I think I'm an attractive woman, but I also feel like I'm the type of woman who isn't everybody's cup of tea. Meaning like to one person, I'm there like fucking eight, nine or 10, but to another person, I'm like they're four. You know what I mean? I do think I'm at least a four to, to like to like everybody, you know, um, but I, I, I just feel like obviously I'm your type or else you wouldn't say that, but I do feel like as part of, uh, as part of my um, physical appearance, I feel like to some people I'm like their dream girl and then to other people I'm just like, oh, she's kind of average. I, I do feel like I, I give off that vibe. It's just from what I notice. I, I feel like I get some guys that are just like obsessed with me and then some guys that want nothing to do with me. So I just feel like that's the vibe I give off. Um, so I don't think I'm like super cute unless I'm your type, you know? Um, to get scientific about the question, if I am your type and you do think I'm super cute, I would say um, it's genetics because my mother is very attractive. Um, I mean, she's much older now and she's put on a bit of weight, but in her, by the way, she's never gonna listen to this. So I, for those of you who are like, oh, you just insulted your mother on air me and my mom don't really talk anymore um but she, when she was in her 20s and her 30s she was like a knockout she was um tall thin she had like thick brown hair um 
you know, she she was the she had the Ukrainian genetics, and I think like Eastern European women are typically just beautiful women. So I think genetically, I must have gotten something <laughs> from her. Hopefully, um, I also eat really healthy and work out, so that must be part of it too. Um, last question. Oh no no, there's another question in here. What is the inspiration for your tats? Okay, okay. For first of all. I'm the kind of person who doesn't really believe that every tattoo needs to have a story, like a backstory. Um, I think it's like, I think in some cases people just like tattoos. Like I think it's okay to like, like I find it hilarious when, like, when some girls have like a heart with butterflies and they're like, I got this heart because it reminds me of the time when I was little and my mother mended my broken heart. Like, like it, it's just like, you just like hearts, like get over it, you know? Um, so I, I don't really think every tattoo needs a deep emotional meaning. And I feel like some people have like the perspective that if your tattoo doesn't have a meaning, it's a fake bullshit tattoo. I think that's bullshit. I think you can just like the aesthetic of tattoos and that's fine. So, but I will tell you what some of the inspiration an inspiration of my tattoos are and I'm, I'm not going to get up so I'm going to um, post a pic a closer picture of my tattoo so you could see um, so the first tattoo actually started I only have two tattoos by the way I have one here on my chest um, in between my breasts which is called a unilome it's a Buddhist symbol um, I'll probably like put a closer picture um, but a unilome it starts curvy on the bottom and then it starts to like twist and turn and then it goes straight and then dots happen. So it's supposed to represent birth, life's twists and turns, going down your straight path and then dying. So it's it's literally just like a Buddhist, it's called a unilome. It's a Buddhist symbol um, for like the path of enlightenment, enlightenment and birth and death. So I really like that. I'm not like a Buddhist by the way, but I, I like some Buddhist philosophies and concepts and I really liked this symbol. Um, as far as my arm, the only things on my arm that are actually inspired by something are the snake and the woman. Everything else is just aesthetically pleasing to me. Like, I'm just gonna be honest, like I was saying before, I don't have a backstory behind flowers. Like, like flowers are beautiful, you know? Um, the snake, it, here's a funny thing too. Years ago, I was the type of person who would never get a tattoo. Like, I never saw myself with a tattoo. Um, and I, 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 you know what, it, I don't know. I, I think I dated a guy that was like, when I was in my like younger 20s, I dated this guy um, who, he was super natural. Like he liked everything natural. Like he, you know, didn't mind if I didn't shave or he didn't like when I wore perfumes and he was just like a big natural buff. Um, and I think I dated him, we only dated for like a year, but I think he had like a big influence on me with like the natural stuff and to the point where I did have a twinge of wanting a tattoo back then, but I think he kind of like shifted my perspective because, and, I, and I'm actually really grateful for it. Like I, th I think that was like, I think actually dating him was an integral part of my journey to like self-love, which doesn't make sense like that y you need someone else to love you to love yourself that sounds like it's not a good way to love yourself but it actually was because i think it was because he was so natural and he loved natural woman natural smelling woman natural body hair and everything that um it was really the first time i allowed myself to like stop wearing makeup and stop wearing perfume and just like kind of be a mess um some days if i wanted to be and still feel beautiful because he didn't mind he, he liked my natural beauty so i think like before dating him there was a twinge of wanting a sleeve tattoo but then he kind of like changed my perspective and made me fall in love with natural bodies as well um so then that like twinge of wanting a tattoo changed and then for like many years like um, let's see, I dated him when I was like 22. So I, I didn't get this till I was like 29. So 22, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Yes, I still count on my fingers. Um, I think for like seven years, I my perspective was like, I don't want to get a tattoo. I'll never get a tattoo. I love my natural body. I don't want to alter my natural body. I'm naturally beautiful. Um, 
and then uh, all of a sudden i was it was so fucking weird i was sitting at a dunkin donuts <coughs> having a coffee and it was like it just popped in my head i was like i want a snake on my arm i <laughs> and I, I don't even know how to explain it. it it was just like it was it was like it came to me like it, 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 it the idea just came to me i was like i want a snake on my arm i never wanted tattoos in my life I have no idea what swayed me or what gave me this idea, but it was just like, it was just like, it was like a creative spurt. Like it was like a creative thing. And um, I actually didn't even know what the snake meant. Like I didn't know why I specifically wanted a snake. I don't like snakes. I think they're like, I, I, um, uh, I would be really scared if I saw a snake in real life. Um, but I just had this like th impulsive thought to get a snake tattooed on my arm. Um, so my tattoo actually started with just a snake and nothing else. I'll try to find a photo of that if I could, but I don't know if it's out there. Um, and I kind of assigned a meaning to the snake later. And again, it was cause I felt like pressured to, like, I was just like, I don't know. I just wanted a snake on my arm. I don't really know why. Um, so let me like assign a meaning to this snake. So I kind of looked up like the spiritual meaning of snakes and it actually did resonate with me, so I kind of like it now. Um, but snakes, like spiritually, are supposed to represent of shedding of your skin and keep moving. And that kind of goes like hand in hand with what I was saying, the thing that I like about myself, which is, um, which is perseverance. So in a sense, like ha being a snake and being able to shed your skin, fucking shed the bullshit and be another snake the next day in a sense that goes hand in hand with perseverance but again i feel like i assigned the meaning because people were pressuring like I, I had to like come up with a story to tell people um so you could say that's the meaning um the woman also means something to me um and again it just started with just a snake i had just a snake and nothing else but then i kind of got hooked and then like once once i saw just a snake i was like oh but now there's all this blank space and it doesn't look even <laughs> like so i feel like that's how it starts it becomes like an addiction like you just get one tattoo and then you say well now my arm just has like one black thing on it and i want like it all to be the same thing <laughs> and like some people get so hooked that they have their whole body done but i'm not i'm not going to do that because um i'll tell you why in a little bit but um once I got the snake, my next idea was to get a woman. Um, and I, I think I just was like looking, I knew that I wanted to fill out more space and I was looking online at like ideas. I was trying to get inspired by ideas and I was really drawn to like um, these sleeve tattoos and that had like beautiful women on it. Um, I was just like super drawn to it. And it's crazy like when i got the woman when i went to my tattoo artist and i was like okay i, I want a woman behind this snake like at first she thought i was kind of crazy but then she like talked to me more about it and i explained to her my vision and she was like okay like let's work with that and she it, it's crazy it looks like the whole thing was planned but it was all out of nowhere like it looks like i had planned a woman and a snake but it was like no the snake came first and then the woman came later and the artist is really good, by the way. So she was able to like make it work as if it was all one plan. Like she gave the, she gave the woman like kind of snake like movement to her hair and she gave her like earrings that have like a snake like look to it. So it looks very thematic. Um, and to me, the, the woman actually does mean something to me. To me, what the woman means is like, like I was explaining to you before, I don't have a relationship with my mother. Um, and I feel like in general, I have always craved like a relationship with a feminine being or like a feminine figure. I've always felt like, like wanting, I was lacking some type of close relationship with a feminine person. Um, and I've had like relationship with some feminine people that have always fallen through some family members that have fallen through that type of thing. But I've always just like you know because of like that lack of that close relationship with my mother i've always just like craved this like f feminine figure in my life so in a sense like because i f because i feel like having that closeness with a woman that i look up to would give me the courage to be the woman i want to be like i wanted a woman role model i wanted a female role model um and i never f you know 
I had I had little bits and pieces of one, but I, I never had one that I was like close with my whole life, like what a mother is supposed to be, you know. Um, so in a sense, like the woman on my arm is kind of supposed to represent like feminine power, like feminine energy. Like I kind of wanted to like tattoo like a mom on me. <laughs> like I know that sounds so fucking weird, but that's what it is. Like I wanted to. I wanted to have like some type of reminder to myself that like even though I didn't have this close relationship with my mother I still have this massive feminine energy so I was for that reason I was so drawn to like seeing a beautiful woman on um a a tattoo you know on like a sleeve tattoo some people ask me if it was me and I'm like how fucking narcissistic do you think I am that I would get like a tattoo of myself on myself um no it's not me but it, it definitely is like it's a brunette and i think the reason i was drawn to like a brunette is because like i wanted it to be like someone who could be a mother to me that, that i sound like a fucking psycho like i know that i'm just like this is my mom that i don't have like tattooed to me um but it, that's like really what it is so there's the snake there's the woman everything else i have no meaning like for any of it it's just like leaves and flowers and things that are beautiful so that's the inspiration of my tattoos and the story um the reason i will not get another tattoo again is because it is so fucking painful that i don't think i could do it at least not soon like i i thought i would be one of those people who have like tattoos like another sleeve here um but i can't do it, it it's I don't want to scare anyone who wants to get a tattoo, by the way, because you can get through it and you'll be fine. I got through it. Um, And honestly, getting through the pain, like, taught me a life lesson about, like, how everything worthwhile in life is going to be painful. You know what I mean? Like, just think about the birth of a child. It's, like, one of the most painful experiences that a woman could go through, but then you've created life. Um, And I think that sentiment can be true for many different things. Like, if you want to pursue a dream, if you want to get in shape, like you know, it's going to be hard and it's going to be challenging and it's going to be painful. So I, even though the tattoo was incredibly painful to get, <coughs> I also have this tattoo that I love so much and I feel like has become such a part of me. So it's like, it's kind of like a life lesson in that sense. Um, another life lesson about getting tattoos is that if you get a tattoo this big, it feels like it's never done because they always have to work on it because you can't just sit there and get this whole tattoo this took like years to, to build on um, because again, it started with the snake and then we did the lady, then we added flowers, then we added more flowers here. Um, and like when it heals, it doesn't always heal properly. So sometimes you have to go back and get it touched up on. I decided to get a little bit of color in it, which it's it's kind of like, I purposely got a dull color because I wanted it to be mostly a black tattoo. I want it to be one of those things that like you look up close and you're like, oh wow, there's color in that. But I didn't want it to be like a bright tattoo in general. I kind of like black work. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Um, but I don't, I, I don't know if I could go through that pain again anytime soon. So I, I don't think I'm going to be like a tatted lady. Um, if anything, I might get like one small one like here or like a a wrist thing here, something like that. But I'm pretty much, I think I'm for the most part, pretty much done. I'm just going to leave it at this sleeve and my symbol. And I'm really happy with that. Um, last question. This is by Joe Pugsley from Instagram. Joe Pugsley, by the way, um, is a musician and a creative person, and um, he has his own record label. So I would definitely check him out, Joe Pugsley. Um, I've done some projects with him, and it's been great to work with him. But he asks me, do you have any original music coming out soon? So the answer is yes, I do. (coughs) Um, It's been a very slow process because the biggest setback has been financial um and recording music is really expensive but as i was saying about the tattoo and about we were the questions people were asking before what's your favorite thing about yourself this is another one of those things like the tattoo that even though i don't have the money to just go in there and bang it out little by little i'm getting it done so um right now i've been recording the keyboard parts um and I have a drummer picked out and I'm not gonna lie, sometimes I can only get into and pay for the recording like once a month. Um, So it's been a very slow process, but it is in progress and it will be done. Um, 
and I don't feel like bad or guilty about having one of my goals was to get the song done this year and I'm still going to try to get it done this year like before the 2022 but I'm also not going to feel guilty if I can't afford to finish all the recordings this year <laughs> and I have to wait till 2022 because at the end of the day that's where I'm at in life right now and that's what I have to do because of my finances so um I'm being persistent and I'm continuing to do it and however long that's going to take is going to take I'm going to try to get it out this year if I can afford to get all those recordings done in time um but I'll be honest it probably will be out in winter of 2022 so I'm I'm thinking it's going to take a few extra months than planned um I was planning to try to get it out by like October November December it's probably especially now that I'm trying to move to the city that's going to mess with my finances a bit um, I'm thinking it's going to be out in like February. So yes, it's coming out soon enough. Um, can't give you an exact deadline yet, but just know that there is something in progress. Um, and as a matter of fact, if anybody knows a good um, music producer, please let me know in the comment section below or whatever, message me later. Um, because right now I'm recording the keyboard with one person. Um, and I'm specifically working with them because they're an amazing keyboard player but they're not like necessarily a big time producer so we're just doing the keyboard recording with them and then i'm going to take the project over to a different music producer um to finish the vocals and the drums um so let me know in the comment section if you guys know any new jersey based um music producers that you would recommend for my project to complete it um it would have to be somebody who's like savvy with modern beats and stuff because just to give you a little foreplay of what i'm writing um the song is completely written it's in like a jazz modern fusion form you guys know i'm really inspired by amy winehouse so there's definitely some inspiration of amy winehouse in there but i've also like fused in some like modern hip-hop beats in there um because i'm really into hip-hop right now and um so it, it it can't be like an old school you know it, producer it's got to be someone who's like very tech savvy and good with modern sounds as well um so yeah new song coming out soon it i have i actually have three songs that i wrote um but i'm gonna release them all as separate singles just because of my financial budget i don't think i could do like an album or anything like that um this one's coming out first the jazz fusion one and then i have another one that's like kind of a jazz fusion one but it's also kind of like i don't even know how to yeah i would say it's a jazz fusion one and then i have another one that's actually very like nina simone-ish it actually is a little more old school and like bluesy um so yeah i've got three songs ready to record it's just a matter of like the timing and um the finances and everything like that so be prepared for the first single hopefully i can get it out to you guys and feed you guys um, with my work by the end of the year but if not you can expect to see it around February and that's that to answer your question so that's it for today we had some topics in the beginning and we had some questions and answers from the listeners um, do me a favor please let me know um, and give me feedback about what you guys like in the podcast um, if there's anything you want me to like add like like do you want more questions and answers are the questions and answers boring to you and you want um uh, more other topics you know i i, I just want to know what you guys like because i got a lot of really good feedback on last the last episode and you know i want to continue to make this work for everybody i have a lot of fun with it um but it's useless if i don't have any listeners so i want to know what the listeners are looking for what do you like about the podcast and um what gets you off um in the podcast yeah that was a weird way to phrase it um anyways this is the prans out of podcast i hope you guys enjoyed yourself this was episode number 22 a solo episode um before we leave don't forget to hit subscribe don't forget to hit like don't forget to comment and if you want to come back there will be another episode next week by the way it's not out on thursdays anymore i changed the date to tuesdays so i will see you guys next tuesday for episode number 23 bye